And I recognize many of you, so I think most of you are familiar with 40 plus. But for a few who are, a quick a little history of 40 plus. We're in our 64th year Woo. as a all volunteer, not for profit organization dedicated to helping mid career professionals make successful career transitions. Uh, the parent organization was founded in 1939 in New York by a group of individuals who recognized that the depression wasn't solving itself and it had resulted in a lot of people being out of work for very long periods of time and the world had moved on and they needed new skills. So those people included um, uh, Tom Watson, the founder of IBM, James, unbelievably named Cash Penny, the founder of J.C. Penny, um, Arthur Godfrey, the entertainer, and uh, Norman Vincent Peale, uh, among others. They were the first advisory board. The concept spread around, and the Washington chapter was founded in 1953. We're looking forward to our 65th year next year, and a big birthday bath of some kind. We haven't decided exactly what. Um, we run three kinds of programs. Most of you have probably been to one or more of our Monday morning free programs. We have uh, people come who talk on subjects of interest to job seekers. We have these evening events which have different formats for and serve different purposes, often aimed more at people who already are working or, or um, involved in the workplace. We give them an evening program which they might be able to attend more easily. And then um, our main program is our job search skills course. And we're getting ready to launch a new course, and we have the members of our new course all here today Yay. because we have <laughs> For joining, and they will be getting started with their official classwork on Monday. And tonight they are going for a little exercise where we evaluate their skills on the way in. Hopefully, when we do the same thing on the way out, we found out they've made great progress. So that's a little bit about 40 plus. And all of you, please come back for Monday morning meetings when you can, for evening events when you would like to, and we look forward to getting to know you. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn the program over to Gerald Skinner, who's actually the chairman of our board and was Whoa. formerly the executive director. And she's going to be the moderator of this panel, and she will tell you her own story of how she got involved in um, financial services sales. And introduce our panel. Thank you so much, Eric. Well, I want to start by introducing very interesting people who love working with people. So I'm going to start with my boss, <laughs> that helps a lot. <laughs> my uh, training, uh, sales development manager and trainer, and I think the world of him, I think he is very sharp, Al Johnson. Al? Uh, started with New York Life in 2009. He has a passion for making a difference in the lives of others. And believe me, since I've seen him in action, this is true. He does go the extra many miles. And proof of it is, he came from Bethesda over here until late tonight to be able to help us out. Thank you so much. Um, he is responsible for the management and development of over 150 agents and financial advisors. Now, he's not the only one. Um, you might say that's a very big uh, ratio of one person to 150. There are three development managers, and then as well, each team member has a team manager. So there is both a team manager and the sales development managers, but their role is vital. Uh, and he says, developing and helping to bring out the best in others has always been a passion of mine. And as I say, I can attest to it. Thank you all for being with us today. And next is Shirley, who very kindly, Shirley Young, who very kindly accepted to come to be in our panel. She works for Transamerica. You are the unit manager for Transamerica. What is the actual title? I'm the registered representative, yes. Okay, registered representative for the office um, out of? Columbia, Maryland. Columbia, Maryland, okay, very good. 
Very interesting background. She is an international multilingual financial professional with Transamerica. She has experience around the globe working with global service brands such as Starwood, Hilton, Wyndham, uh, Shangri-La, Radisson, and Accor, right? And uh, she aims to educate families as to how money works and how she can help their, her clients to achieve their financial security. And a common thread I think that is very important is liking people, wanting to work with people, and help people. And last but not least is our illustrious John Will. <laughs> he is uh, a dear member of the 40 plus family. He graduated from our course about a year ago. Is that right? Or a year and a yeah, half or yeah. more? Time flies. Time, time flies. That's right, when you're having fun. And uh, John Willem got his first job uh, in this industry right after graduating the course, about a month after. Mm -hmm. Is that right? More or less? I think I got the job, but the start was, yeah. Like a little bit later. A little bit later. But he, has, he did very well after the course, and I think he is testimony to the fact that the course works. Wouldn't you say? I would say so. Yeah. Okay. I, I highly recommend it. Okay. okay. <laughs> and not only because I teach. Okay. <laughs> or facilitate. And, facilitate. and now, um, one of the ways that we are able to carry out this organization on an all-volunteer basis is that the wonderful people that graduate from our course come back to give back to the organization. And John is a great example of that. Now, another aspect about John that I think you should know, you're a CPA, CPA. and you have the series six. Six and 63. Six and 63, and as well, he has the life insurance. Yes. So, uh, and John got all this since the last year or so. No, CPA uh, a long time ago. Oh, CPA, CPA is a <laughs> <the laughs> younger when I, you know, I took the CPA. <laughs> you were a kid. So in any case, we are very happy to have John here with us, and he's going to be speaking as well. So now uh, we decided that we were going to let ladies first, and so Shirley, come right up and talk to us a little bit. Great. Thank you so much, Jeremy, and well, welcome. Sure. Thank you. I think I have to. Can this, um, can this like to be dimmer, or can you guys see this again? Okay? Because I think once I flip this, this might uh, more. One pair, one set of lights is going to go. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it much better yeah. for you yes. guys? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, good evening, everyone. Awesome. Just want to make sure you guys are able to I know how uh, long they work, and it's so good to um, have you guys here. It's my uh, great privilege to be here. Um, my name is, again, Shirley Young, so the Transamerica Financial Advisor. And I figured so, to use the 10 minutes that I have, I better to time myself. So I'm going to go over the time so I can let my peer team have work a long time. I wanted just to share a little bit um, the story kind of from our industry and more so from my own little bit stories as well. But first of all, I wanted to uh, uh, give a round of applause to all the women in the room. <laughs> the reason I said it because when you come into financial industry, oftentimes women will feel like, hey, this is, this is the industry is getting a little bit intimidated. I don't know about the ladies in the room. When I first learned about financial industry, I just said, well, I don't know, this is Wall Street, and it's dominated by male, right? So I said, I don't know about me, it's women's, and uh, sometimes people can't even understand my language and speaking in English. I said, okay, should I speak Chinese or Malay? Maybe not. So I think I would stick with that. But I think overall, when you look at the, the, the financial industry, I think it has evolved so much just between the last uh, 10 to 20 years. So I wanted to just do all the timing myself. Okay, awesome. So I figured to use the next 10 minutes, just kind of share a little bit of perspective from the industry. So let's start off, uh, just kind of take a look. With the overall financial state of the nation, I think I should kind of here so I can see a little better. Okay, so I think this is probably not surprising to many individual, right, when we look at that. Overall, the average household, you know, in the country, and it's about 54,000 in you know, that. 38% of the Americans who don't save enough for retirement, right? 72% of the workers who do not have access to the five benefit plan. Um, and then by 2034, the expected of the pollution of the trust fund to support social security. I think this is not the new news, right? Especially when we so um, run the capital of the nation. 
So do you see if some maybe in one of this number, they are a lot of statistics which I'm not going to share with you guys. So that you guys should be happy. Uh, oftentimes a financial professional, we love to share the statistics. But I think when you're looking at the overall state of the nation, right, why is this so important? And then now looking into financial industry, this is where we want to talk a little bit more tonight, is we also experience the same challenges we have. And even though with the financial industry, <coughs> we have lost more than about 12% of the financial advisor just within the you know, last uh, um, almost a decade, right? When you see that the overall nation, the challenges we're facing, and it's also in the financial industry, why is it important for us to know about it? And you can see uh, along with my peers here, you know, from a nice colleagues and also New York Live and many financial uh, uh, institutions out there, we are actively looking for quality individual to really join our cause and our mission, to really go out there to serve in America. Because we know the financial challenge is not gonna go away. If we can't even take control and to manage our own household, would you all agree, right? So looking at that, so we, we, there are nearly about one third of the uh, financial professional, they're going to retire within the next decade. So this tells you, this number is actually increases already, is close to about quarter million. I was talking to Jenny, uh, Jenny early on, right? We are looking for just quarter million to serve the baby boomer generation. How about the generation like mine, generation X? and then the generation millennium, and then the generation Z to come, right? This other industry, this other professional, you can't really farm up the job to India and China because you have to be licensed in the United States in order to practice that. So what does it tell you, right? The next 10, 15, 20, 30 years when you look at the career, does it say maybe a little bit about the security? I think if you will Google that and look at yahoo.com, I think financial, especially personal financial advisor, is gonna be the top five. Uh, future career opportunity and a lot of people will be looking for. So what is the future opportunity here we're talking about specifically? And I hope many of you are motivated by challenges, right? And wanted to be better and wanted to make an impact in your life and your family's life. So I want to share with you a little bit how I kind of get into that. Um, I grew up in uh, Malaysia, so I left the country when I was 18. Uh, went to New Zealand to learn English. So after I left home, I, I barely can speak the English right, other than to, to know how to write and read simple English. So I said, why not, right? Go out there to see the world. And then have the great fortune to say, hey, this is about the timing, right? What I want to learn. And that time in Asia, hospitality industry was very, very popular. So everyone wanted to travel, everyone wanted to be in the hospitality. It's kind of a glamorous job. I don't know where I get that from. So anyway, so I love that. So I studied hospitality in New Zealand, Australia, and then graduated, went back to uh, Singapore and Malaysia. So I worked there for a few years. But then at the back of my head, I was thinking that, I always hear people talk about America, you know, the land of opportunity. So I said, you know, I talked to my parents, I want to come here for the land of opportunity, for the America dream. So I came here to finish my bachelor and then my MBA in uh, business marketing. Uh, so that's all my background, 16 years, when Gerald was mentioned, all those companies was in the hospitality. But I did a lot of different operations, uh, sales and marketing, revenue, uh, accountings as well. So I appreciate the industry giving me so many different um, experience, but when you really look at that, the life priority changed, and that kind of said, okay, hospitality, okay, if I go back to Asia, it might not be as desired as what it was 20 years ago. So now, if you have a chance to really be wealthy or to be financial independence in your life, would it make sense to be at the right place at the right time to position yourself? My family, they all grew up in a small business entrepreneur. Uh, my family owns a gas station, construction company, uh, restaurant, of course, Chinese, right? With a restaurant. <laughs> and uh, what else? Uh, grocery store. And uh, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of different businesses. But when you own a small business, it's different. You don't have a system. But if you want to build 10 restaurants, do you need to have a system? You do. Otherwise, you won't be in a 10 restaurant working 24 7, right? So when I thought about, okay, so what would be a good opportunity? Is it still IT? Is it still a manufacturing automobile industry? Is it a real estate industry? So why are we looking at this? Is timing is everything. Right, who is the baby boomer in the room? Born in 1946 and 64, let me see it. Good, good, awesome. My parents, even my husband, is a baby boomer. So that tells you that how well I know this, this generation. They control one third of the wealth of the country. So when they move, the whole industry move, right? So if you were born here, if you were, were invested in the grower, baby food, then it's awesome, right? 76 million of baby need a food. And then what happened? The toy industry, fast food industry, car industry, <coughs> Real estate industry, and then now what happened? What are the baby boomers doing since 2011? They start retiring 10,000 of them every single day, right? So if you're going to position yourself, this is the time. 
where all the wealth is moving. When they move from one hand to one hand, so much money is moving on, the money ought to be made, right? So we're thinking about that, not only them, and then us, and maybe some of the younger individuals, maybe the millennial, uh, they're here. So there are a lot of opportunity. It's a critical needs that we're in the industry. Everyone needs help. You know, if you talk about 10, 15 years ago to our parent generation, personal finance, like, what, what, what do we need? Personal finance? Why do we need somebody to manage our money? Actually, it's non-existent. So now I wanted to introduce this whole company. Who has used Uber before? Wow, oh my god, there's so many. Netflix, awesome. Airbnb, okay. Alibaba, okay, not many. Myself, I haven't even tried it. So what are this, all these companies <coughs> have in common when you look at that? They are all platform brands. company. They are all unique brands, right? They are dominated, they are disruptive in the industry. Look at Uber, they are the largest taxi services company, owns no car. They started in 2009. Netflix, the largest entertainment service, owns no theater, started in 2007. Airbnb, the largest rest uh, room booking services, owns no property. When I was in a hotel at that time, 2008, when the markets and financial crisis right, we were like, oh my god, this is going to be our major competitor, and what are we going to do? And now I love Airbnb. Everywhere I travel, especially overseas, I stay in Airbnb instead of the hotel. You know, I have a lot of hotel connection. Alibaba, of course, the largest retail services own no inventory starting in 1990. Why did I tell you about this? Because Transamerica, we are the platform company. You know, we are building a financial literacy company. So in the future, we will be the largest financial service distribution. Where we're going to have no classroom, hire no teacher, and where all the students can receive financial education for free. This is our vision. So we want to be one of those dominated industry a company in the financial industry be able to provide those resources to all walks of life families. Not only a fluent market, the top 10% can access the financial resources. We want to make sure everyone's in America they have the same chance, right? So how are we gonna go about doing that? It's by bringing the three innovation that allow us to fill the gap between how we're gonna help Americans to achieve American dream. Did you guys know that in order to have American dream, it costs 130,000 by USA Today survey. In order to have the lifestyle you wanted to have, what people call American dream, it costs 130,000. So now I'm gonna ask you guys, guess how much is the annual um, average household income in your United States? How much? Just shout it out. 54,000. Okay. 60. 60, 54, anyone? Very, very close. It's under 61,000. You can see the gap, right? It's almost double. So how can average Americans afford the American dream? Right, so we are here to close the gap. How are we gonna do that? Three things we're gonna do. By making sure the financial education, we can make that available. You know, one out of third um, adults in worldwide, they are financially illiterate. One out of two, almost one out of two in America, they are financially illiterate. And US ranked the top 14 in a global literacy. When you think about it, I think we should be in the top five, shouldn't we? In a country, a leading country of the world. So when you think about it, clearly we lack of financial education. Right, thinking about sex education, it's all available in 50 states. Financial education, only 17 states. Right, they taught about personal finance, one class in, in a classroom, right? So we want to make sure how are we going to expand the financial literacy education. And then also bring in the disruptive technology. Right, nowadays everyone is on technology, right? How we purchase and how we uh, learn the different resources. So we want to make sure not only we provide a very high personal touch to engage with our client, and we also want to bring the high tech. If not, we will be left behind by general generous, uh, millennial and also Generation Z, right? So how are we gonna bring in that, make sure all of our leaders in the field, we can better engage to our client, to be able to be more efficiently serve our family. And then the last thing I think which is I'm most proud of, because I came here for the American dream, for business and career, and this is the financial team building business and what we're going to offer. Many Americans, they always say, you know, we need to make more money, right? If not, well, we can even save more, well, we have to spend it more. So how are we gonna do that is with the economics of financial combined with the skill of team building, that we allow them to have unlimited entrepreneurial opportunity. So with this, everyone deserves a chance. 
and we're going to talk more about it. Whether you need to have a certain requirements, licenses, the background, we're going to, we're going to get into that. So now, just a little bit of our company background. Uh, a lot of you know the Transamerica Rise. Who has seen the Transamerica Pyramid Building in the downtown of San Francisco? Awesome. And many years ago, when I was in college, I was there. I was like, this is a weird building in the middle of the <laughs> history. Like, how did we go around this block? <laughs> Actually, it's Transamerica. And then my first hotel company has a Transamerica as a 401k. And I never know so many years later, I'm actually <coughs> partnering with Transamerica. So they are our independent broker and dealer. So we are not the employee, we are the independent rep. So we actually have a business relationship with them, which is awesome. Because to be honest, I really don't want to be an employee for anybody else. I want to be my own uh, own boss, right? So with Transamerica, our parents' company is Agons out of Netherlands. So we are the one of the top 200 global fortune company, not top US 500 fortune company, global fortune company. And we have about close to now 16 billions of the capitalization in 20 different, 20 plus different market globally. So in North America, we run our business under a Transamerica brand, where we have close to 100 years of history, right? And then under here, another sister company is our security broker dealer. This is where I come in, this uh, financial, uh, financial advisor. And then also here, we have our administrative, our back office, and then the marketing company. And then this is our World Financial Group insurance company. So all the insurance, whether it's property <coughs> casualty, life, health, disability, um, supplement group, anything to do with insurance has come under World Financial Group. And then we have another new uh, member joining us. The founder of this company's Wealthway has been with the company for about 30 years, <coughs> but re rebrands the company and then named the Wealthway. So this is where the financial literacy is going to come in. So, and we also have trademark HowMoneyWorks.com. So it's very, very cool. There's a lot of the things we're coming in. Um, so this kind of tells you a little bit of our platform. These are the five major platform companies we work with. So it's not only Transamerica. We have a technology platform, we have education platform, marketing platform, administration, and a security platform, right? And then the solution, of course, I have to mention it, right? We know a little bit of the challenge. We know how we're going to provide the solution by doing the three innovative um, strategy. But I must mention about the mission. You know, anything that we do, what we stand for, we all have to know why we do what we do, right? What drives us? That is our mission. The mission has to be big enough. Every single American can resonate our mission. Our mission is to help all walks of life and leave no family behind. We probably said that even if you don't have the money to invest, you're in debt, we will help you to get out of debt, even though we don't make sense. So that is our mission. It's a hard, long road ahead. But we believe that together, with many white people joining our, our industry, we can accomplish that to help America to, to get back and to pursue our dreams. So it doesn't matter where you are, family A, family B. Some people transition from family A to family B to family A due to certain financial circumstances. But it doesn't matter. We're here to help everyone. And we focusing a lot through our practices is about teaching the individual, family, and business owner a very fundamental financial concept. And been with the company for almost four years, I have to say maybe less than 5% of individual, which even close to a network over 5 million individual, have not really understand the four simple financial points. It sounds very simple. Protection, growth, safety, tax advantage. But how many people really, really maximize and do very well planning of all of this? It's, it's very, very few. Um, so we are very proud to have our system, our education platform, to make sure we help all of our clients to ensure that this four cornerstone is secure. And of course, with all of that, you cannot do without a world-class products and service solution, right? <coughs> so with that Transamerica, we have our security platform, and this is our digital investment platform. So a lot of times, this really attracts a much younger individual like millennial. And when they have a modest, investment, right? So they just start out college, don't really make a lot of money yet, but they can start as minimum $10 to have a digital investment platform, and then they can do that just right at their mobile phone. So what's the tells them? Get them start saving, get them start investing, right? Because time is on their side. So it's important to really educate them. So they don't have to wait until they have half a million to start saving, right? So over here, when we have a little bit more affluence, a client, they can start with 25,000. Some of the traditional Advisor, then you know that, right? Minimum startup is a six figure before you can even get active money management. But we start with this 25,000. Why? Because we are here to help middle class income families. So we want to make sure we are here to help them to build the wealth over a million dollars, right? 
So this are the world class uh, uh, solution that we have. And not only Transamerica, we can access over 150 plus company that have an agreement with us. And we can access about 500 plus products and solution. What's it tells you? We're kind of like Alibaba and Amazon of the world in the financial market. So we don't work for a company, we work for our client. We represent our client to those company and say, hey, what is the best solution for our client? So I don't have any incentive over, um, let's pick any of the company here, right? Let's have a Gerber Life, the Met Life, Pacific Life, uh, North America, Nationwide, Allianz, you know, Prudential, you name it. And we can list all of them, 150 plus of them. So to them, we, we are the ambassador, we are the advocates for our client. And if you will work with us, same to go into Nationwide, it will be the same fee, same charge, same cost. So why would people want to work with us? Because we have the best interest for them, and we are advocates, and we are the independent business owner. So we are not working for somebody else. We might move, we might promote it, and then you, you kind of stop the relationship, right? So they kind of really set us apart. So we are open for business, we are open for you, and uh, we hope that you will look into the industry and look at how beautiful a lot of things that we ought to change our own family, and also get to help many, many families to change their life. So here, you can see a little bit here, the new faces of financial service is a very proud what I why I give a round of applause to all the women is because Transamerica Financial Advisor have consistently ranked number one independent broker in the US based on the number of female representatives and also a number of producing female representatives. I think that deserves a round of applause, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I'm very proud because in the industry it's, it's hard, it's dominated by male and that you have the women being able to enter, I think it's bring a different set of the experience and the skills yet. And uh, just thinking about women, right? Women talk about money differently, we buy things differently, we, we plan money differently. So we should have the female advisor to be impressive. So with that, you know, I, I wanted to um, kind of conclude that, you know, with the solution that we offer really is a solid platform. It has been proven for many, many decades to help individuals that you are interested to explore in the financial services a very, very solid financial services platform. And also we have a match up few training program. We're gonna maybe talk a little bit if we have time. Um, so you can learn from other representatives. So it's not just you go out there on your own, and then maybe you will have a supervisor and trainer just assist you for a couple of months, and then the rest of the time, you are on your own. We are not. We always work with multiple offices. I can call New York, I can call Hawaii, I can call Puerto Rico, and my team will be there to help me. So it's, it's like you are in the business for yourself, for your family, but you never be by yourself. Just very, very different when I was working 16 years in corporate, right? Um, and then you can start part-time, just like me. When I started, I was managing two Starwood hotels in Reston. Two hotels to manage, this is a lot, and I was in the major sales force, uh, number one sales director, right? So I didn't want to quit my job. I didn't know whether this is really right for me. Can I really do this? Would there be somebody there to help me, right? So I think about, I said, you know what, let me start part-time. Let me learn about this knowledge so I can be a better money manager for myself. Right? And then to see if I can really make money or not. Which I did. After a year, I said, you know what? This is the things that I have been always looking for. I've been looking for business opportunity for four or five years before I found Transamerica. So I'm so, so thankful to have the opportunity. So you can start part-time with us. You don't have to change anything what you do. And of course, all of this, we can talk more about administration, technology, back office, training, um, everything we have, a turnkey solution. So you as a business owner comes in, you don't have to worry about the overhead and the back office is already taken care of. That's why we work with five platform companies, that's the reason. And we are here again to build the largest financial distribution. We want to go to every rural county, every corner of the country to help those individuals that don't have the access to financial services product. And we are here calling for those individuals who has the heart and want to help people and make a difference in our life mm -hmm. and other people's life. Uh, just to kind of wrap up with this compensation a little bit, I know that uh, we're going to touch on this a little bit. A little over now. Yeah, so we have four different ways. Uh, based on your own personal efforts, um, if you wanted to do, just build an agency like I do, uh, you can have the agency compensation. And expansion anywhere else in North America, you also have the expansion uh, incomes as well. The, the last but not least is the bonus. Once you become an executive, you can uh, take advantage of a lot of the uh, uh, great offers. So, Again, you know, decide if this is the right for you, and I will turn the time uh, back to my next speaker. And I look forward to getting to know uh, more of you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Now, your turn. Oh, and do you have? Did you put it in there? Yeah.
So question, should I use my timer or Shirley's timer? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. It's in all the time, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously? Um, so first and foremost, phenomenal job, Shirley. Um, I did not bring as many slides, so what I'm going to try to do is touch on a couple of key points. Um, I think Shirley did a phenomenal job of telling us uh, the need for you. Uh, within our profession. Uh, the baby boomers generation is definitely taking over. Many people are retiring and the need of financial advisors has never been greater, right? So I think it boils down to which company uh, is going to be best suited for you, your family, uh, which company has the reputation uh, that you're going to need as a new person uh, in the industry uh, because reputation means a lot and also what company is going to give you the tools, resources, and knowledge to effectively uh, take advantage and utilize the skills that you're going to need to take to the marketplace. So I'm with New York Life. Again, my name is Al Johnson. I'm a sales development manager. Uh, and my core responsibility uh, and role with New York Life is to train, develop new agents uh, to make sure that they have the skill, knowledge, and resources necessary to fulfill <coughs> the financial obligations and provide phenomenal solutions for the clients and with, in the communities in which they serve. All right, so what I'm gonna to touch on a little bit is kind of what it takes to uh, make it in the financial services industry at a extremely high level, uh, because uh, it sounds as if a lot of you all have been in careers, uh, and I'm sure you've been in careers, and the next career that you get into, you probably wanna make sure it's a, a last stop, if I had to take a guess. Am I, am I pretty accurate on that? Anyone? Okay, um, so let's talk about New York Life a little bit. Uh, and what does it take to succeed in the financial services industry? First and foremost, uh, we're looking for someone with the willingness to work hard, all right? Uh, we're looking for someone with self-confidence, uh, enthusiasm, goal-directed behavior, and in the financial services industry, you definitely have to have a set of prospecting skills, and those skills can not only be taught uh, but we, we hope the person that comes into the industry has the work ethic to be able to get out there and get a strong job done in regards to finding clients to build a business. Uh, we also have to have planning skills. You know, we, we are uh, entering a very vital time where knowledge and planning is really going to be key to the solutions that you're bringing to your clients. And those are, these are all of the things that we're going to help you with. Uh, knowledge of company products client-centered behavior. New York Life is a very client-centered company, um, not a transactional firm at all. Uh, so what we really do on a day-to-day -day basis is sit down with clients and try to figure out two things. We try to figure out where they are now, where they want to be financially, and then we create a roadmap for them to get there. So we want to make sure that we have a person that is into the client and truly wants to keep the client's best interests at heart. All right, uh, of course we have to have the ability to answer key questions and also uh, be very creative in regards to problem solving. Now, one thing that you don't need uh, is industry experience, okay? And if everyone that came into the New York Life had industry experience, I wouldn't have a job. So I wanna make sure that you don't have any industry experience when you come in. All right, so what about New York Life? Um, New York Life truly has never been stronger than we are now. And uh, one of the things that we hold true is the you know, consistency and the longevity of the company. New York Life is the largest, as well as the oldest, mutual life insurance company <coughs> in the nation, all right? Um, the most important piece of that, if I could say so, is probably the word mutual. There are two types of companies in the industry. There are stock companies. So we have your Facebooks, your Googles, your AT&Ts, your Alibabas, all of the companies that we saw up there. All right, um, and then we have privately held companies. New York Life is a privately held mutual company. So in essence, we are owned by our policy owners. 
Now that allows us to do a couple of things. The first thing it allows us to do is maintain phenomenal financial strength ratings um, really throughout our existence. We're AAA rated with all the major rating agencies that exist, and those are AM Best, Moody's, Fitch, and S&P. So AAA rated across the board. And we actually have something that's called a 100% Comdex score, which states that there's no financial uh, company that has a higher rating than New York Life. We are 100 out of 100, all right? Uh, the second thing that mutuality does is it allows us to make strong, prudent financial decisions, okay? <coughs> Not only for us and our company, for our policyholders. We don't have to flow with the whims of Wall Street. Uh, we don't have to make quarterly quotas to make sure that our shareholders are happy. The decisions that we make are for the strength of our company and the strength of our policyholders, and we want to ensure that we'll be in business for another 172 years. So that's what mutuality brings to the table. Um, we have a surplus of $23.3 billion. Uh, and basically what that means is if New York Life had to pay out all of its liabilities, we had to pay out all of our guaranteed income uh, annuitants, we had to pay out all of the cash value within our whole life policies, we would still have $23.3 billion left over. And I would say that that's pretty strong. We're currently the nation's uh, number one provider of individual life insurance, number one provider of guaranteed lifetime income, income annuities, number two provider of deferred fixed annuities, uh, which these two, guaranteed lifetime income annuities as well as deferred fixed annuities, those are the strongest and the largest selling products within the retirement market. So when we talk about baby boomers, and we're talking about wanting to make sure uh, that they have the products and solutions that they need to thrive in retirement, we, those baby boomers want to go to a company that's been there, okay, through their lifetime, one that they recognize, one that they trust, and our, our, the, the, the market share that we, that we have in those categories shows that New York Life is that company, all right? We currently have $538 billion of assets under management, and in 2017, New York Life issued its 163rd year consecutive dividend, okay? Um, so going back to the stockholders really quickly, um, if you own stock in a company, uh, in a blue chip company like a Coca-Cola or AT&T or whatever the case may be, um, the reason why we buy really shares in those companies is not because we think the company is going to skyrocket and grow anymore, right? The company's been there. But it's because those companies pay dividends, right? Um, New York Life is a mutual company and our <coughs> dividends go to our policyholders. So for the last 163 years we've paid dividends. Uh, very, very strong. Now, um, when it comes to success in the financial services industry, uh, when it comes to the who, who's, who's who of the financial services industry, there's a little group of 32,000, excuse me, 37,000 advisors um, across the nation called the MDRT, other words known as the Million Dollar Roundtable. New York Life has led that Million Dollar Roundtable for the past 62 years, okay? Um, in terms of the number, Last year, 2016, New York Life had 2,511 advisors in the MDRT. Our next and closest competitor was from another great company called Northwestern Mutual, and they had 1,000. The following, the company after that was Mass Mutual. They had less than a third at 624. Um, I say that this is due to the training that we bring forth uh, within the industry. Okay, uh, second to none. So that's something that we're proud of. Uh, we enroll our agents in a lot of individual development programs. Um, the one that shines true is Nylick University. Uh, we have a set three to four year curriculum uh, that we take all of our agents through called Nylick University is created and it's world renowned. Uh, we uh, obviously have field training as well. That's where I come in. Uh, we have a council program as well as advanced marketing coaches. And we also work our, we have programs that allow our agents to work through industry designations and degrees. So you can get your CLU, your CHFC, your CFP, all of these different designations in New York Life will assist you on doing that. Again, elevating your career and elevating your reputation within the marketplace. We want you to be the best of the best. Now, Nyla University, we spoke about that. Um, and it really is career-long development, okay? Um, right here is where you all would be if you decided to start 
discussing a career in financial services with us. Not even in the pre-contract pre stage or the career orientation stage. Uh, but once you become contracted with New York Life, you go to career orientation. Uh, we have a fundamental career school that lasts about a week uh, that really gives you the nuts and bolts of the business. After that, you go through something that's called a basic career course, which you know, gives you all of the core knowledge that you need to succeed in the business. Uh, the intermediate career course comes after that, and that really gets into a little bit more of advanced marketing tools. Uh, we have professional development workshop series, career development conference, which is in Dallas, Texas. Through your first 36 months, we have associate programs, which really makes you ex experts in business insurance, estate planning, retirement planning, long-term care insurance. I mean, I can go on and on, okay? But really what this shows you um, is that we have a consistent and a uh, core, and really it's in our core, emphasis and a desire to make sure that our agents are the best of the best in the industry, okay? Uh, and really the, the, the basis of our career agency system is that if you come into New York Life, we not only want you to thrive, but we want you to retire with us. Okay, so I don't have all the slides about the benefits and, and things of that nature, but we have a 401k, we have the health insurance, we have disability, but we have something that not many companies still have, and that's a pension, all right? Uh, so that really drives it and gives you an idea about the emphasis and the investment that we make with each and every person that comes into our company. New York Life, Gerald, has a pension. All right, so um, once we sit down, if we get to the point where we sit down, we can definitely discuss that a little further as well. Um, what are the things that I really like, and how many more minutes do I have? I want to make sure my phone's not um, broken. Three. <laughs> two. All right, two. Yeah. All right. Um, we're, three. We have questions. So. Okay. Um, this is how your agency would look, okay? So we talked about um, being independent, and then independent is cool, um, but we want to make sure that you have the support needed, right? So when you sit down in front of a client as a new person, you truly can say that, Mr. Client, you know what? I'm brand new to the business, but I have 172 years of knowledge, resources, and experience behind me. And this is kind of how my practice works, okay? You would be John Nilek agent up top. After that, you have a whole plethora of people that are in office to assist you. So we have a managing partner, we have development managers, uh, we have life product consultants, uh, retirement specialists, advanced planning consultants, long-term care consultants. And these people actually have names and numbers. And they come and visit to our office and they actually will go out in the field with you. I um, mean, when they go out in the field with you, you're gonna love the commission split that comes with that. Um, it's 100% you, 0% us, okay? Because every person, um, that is uh, responsible for your growth within the New York life system is non-producing. Meaning if you, Eliana, if you wanted to purchase a life insurance policy from me tonight, I couldn't sell it to you, okay? Because my job is to develop Gerald, and I get paid by the New York life, okay? Um, so we're very structured in, in the way that we work in, in regards to that. So the support is there and, and the structure's there. We have four methods of developing one agent. All right, um, and those uh, methods are performance review and planning. So each one of you all will have a partner, okay, or a development manager that sits down with you on a weekly basis to consult you on how your business is going, okay? We talk about how things, how did your last week look? Uh, what do we have planned this week? What are we doing in the marketplace? And that's called performance review and planning. We also have indi individual instruction and drill, where we take a look at the needs of every individual and we train them on where they need to go and what specific needs um, they need to be trained on. We have field development and observation, excuse me, field observation and demonstration where we go out in the field with you uh, to demonstrate and observe exactly what you do in the field. And then we have uh, every Monday all day long group instruction and drill where you come in and we kind of do what I'm doing now. Someone talks to you, um, teaches you about products, teaches you about sales concepts, so, so on and so forth. So those are the methods that we use to develop. We have target market support, so if you work in any of these markets, we even have a resource and a team in New York that supports you. So if you work in the Chinese market, the Latino market, the Vietnamese market, if you like to work in the women's market, young professionals, we have a team of resources there to support you. 
Um, we go into different marketing because, you know, the truth of the matter is the products are beautiful. Um, the marketplace is insatiable, right? Uh, people need us. Uh, but one of the things that you're going to have to look at and do, no matter what company you're with, um, is be able to prospect, be able to find clients. Um, and, you know, different companies have different uh, models and different ways that they go about that. But prospecting in most companies in the financial services industry is a core skill, and it's a core skill that we teach on a warm side as well as cold marketing assets as well. So we teach you how to tap into your natural market. We teach you how to get personal introductions. We teach you how to reach out to centers of influence, uh, whether they're um, uh, nonprofits, or whether they're CPAs, lawyers, estate attorneys, whatever the case may be. Teach you how to work with business owners. So there are a plethora of ways to do this business, but we want to make sure that we tap into the way that works for you and makes you most successful. All right? And that's New York Life. And now, you want to speak a little bit? We do have said questions, so do bear in mind uh, that we want to make sure to get some of these questions answered. Are you worried that we're going to go? <laughs> How do we get that off of the screen? Oh, yeah, the so like, B button? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I, uh, I promise my clock is not broken. <laughs> uh, I want to just take a couple minutes just to talk about the opportunity that this field has for you. And we talked about, Shirley talked nicely about there's a big need because there's the baby boomers. Al mentioned that very rare that the pensions are, you know, thing of the dodo bird, really. They're, they're going away. And this puts a big onus on the individual to take care of their own finances. And yet, as Shirley pointed out, there's not a lot of education going on in our schools at any level, high school or college. It's certainly not enough to handle the new pressures that are on people to manage their own money. And again, all of this is done so that, uh, you know, our companies need to be lean so that they can compete globally. So there's a big need out there, and I want you guys to realize that this big <coughs> need means big opportunities for you. Now, what does this mean? Well, I'm a field agent with the Knights of Columbus, and I can tell you, I meet with people every day. And what it means is you can make a difference in people's lives. Like, you can't imagine. You know, I make with people, some are good stories. They saved all their lives. They have, they're, they're, we're talking about issues of retiring at 60 versus 65. But there are also stories where you're talking to people where the issue is, gee, I had a major medical thing. I didn't really know that you know, my, my insurance didn't cover these sort of things, and I'm vulnerable. And so you can go out there and help people before they run into these problems. And that's why I've chosen this field, because you can serve and help other people. I think that's, when you're thinking about th moving into this field, I think you'll have a lot more success if you put your client first. And we'll, we'll be back on schedule now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay, so I've come up with a few questions that I think would help us um, put a fine point on differences among the um, various organizations. So the first question is, it is widely known that there are different business models in the financial services industry. What is your business model and what do you believe are the pros and cons of your model? So, Al, why don't we start with you and then work sure. this way. Sure, um, so absolutely correct. Uh, many different models in the industry. Uh, we've heard of a more of an independent model with Transamerica. Knights of Columbus, I believe, is a fraternal organization, a fraternal model. Uh, New York Life is uh, one of the few remaining career agencies. Uh, and it, the, the big difference between a career agency is really the amount of <coughs> effort, money, and resources that we utilize to make sure that when someone steps through the halls of New York Life, they're stepping in to make it a career, okay? Um, you've seen the Nyalik University, um, 
you know, a lot of money is put in and forth in regards to training and resources. Uh, the pension is something else that shows that we take our agents' retirement and their lifestyle uh, very, very seriously. And you know, con contrary to popular belief, New York Life, after you get there and you're there for a while, you're actually not a captive agent, meaning you don't only have to sell New York Life. After you're with our organization for four years and you become what we call an established agent, at that point you're actually able to broker business um, as well. So it's not that New York Life wants to you know, hold you captive, um, it's that we want to make sure you have the tools and the resources to make sure that you're, you're, you're off to a fast track, but not only a fast track, but a long uh, marathon in this business. I think the uniqueness about our models is, is really kind of like the old industry come up with a new idea, right? How, how are you going to innovate and move with time? Of course, we have a very traditional corporate structure where many companies have it. But I think what's really attracted us is also have the kind of franchise characteristic, which means if you want to open, you have a lot of flexibility, kind of like the Uber, building an Uber company. You are not just the Uber driver, like agents and advisor. You are actually building the company inside the company. So there's a lot of freedom within the framework that you can really customize here. And then also another unique, there's not only corporation, a little bit franchise characters we have. And then we have really based on the referral base as well. As you all know that you know, any businesses you need to be successful is all words of mouth, it's, it's a referral, right? Whether you're working with your existing warm natural market or you're working to build a new relationship, a co-market, if you will, it's still, I think that's heavily how, how we are driven. So I think those are two, uh, three different models. But then I think that the interesting part is how we're going to bring in the innovative platform. You know, any company that you have option to work with. So but for example, right, if you want to work with Nationwide, you can be appointed with Nationwide. If you want to work with MetLife, you can be. So they give you a lot of access, a power of choice that you can represent. So how do we really know, right, if we are access only three solutions? Is this really the best interest and the best solution for the client? How about let the client to be you know, the, the decision maker, right? If we can really help them to go through the process. I think the power of choice and then the earning structure, you know, before I accepted the offer, I compared to three other agencies. Uh, one is very similar traditional model, like New York Life, but it's other agency. Um, you know, the other one is a traditional financial broker, and the other one is independent, right? So once I can compare that with the compensation structure, once you really study to it, it does make a difference if you're really looking at ownership, right? How truly can you own the business? I think that makes a little difference with our model. Yes. Thank you. Okay, always tough following, sure. Uh, you know, so the paternal model is very different in that we exist for the benefit of our members. And so, unlike these other guys, I, I'm given a book of business from day one, and my job is just to service our people, to make sure that our members are take, being taken care of. Now, under our model, one of the cons is that I am a captured agent, so I can only sell our products. Now, when you're a captured, captive agent, the one thing you want to be sure of is that you have really good products. And that's the one thing I can say about the Knights of Columbus. The design of our products make me proud to be a member of, of our uh, fraternal order. But also, the fact that because we're a fraternity, there's not a lot of competition Everyone is very uh, collaborative in our environment. So that would be a, a, a plus with going with a firm, a fraternal firm like uh, the Knights of Columbus. And I will say, after having done some research and all um, honesty, I was so surprised. I thought that Knights of Columbus was something very small. But your, I saw your ranking, and you're, you rank fourth according to this uh, com the vital signs com uh, complex. Yeah. Yeah, com so uh, you know, very surprising, but well, we accounts look into the numbers. Yes, so, yeah. so, so we knew that. We knew that. Yeah. So um, this is a differentiator. What attributes stand out most about your company? What differentiates you if someone were to consider a career with your company? And let's start again with Alan. Yeah, I um, hate to continue to beat the dead horse, 
Uh, but it's a very important horse. <laughs> so New York Life has four pillars of our business model that we uh, continue to thrive on and continue to hold steadfast to. Uh, the first one is mutuality. And you know, we've always been a mutual company, we'll always continue to be a mutual company. When a lot of other, the com other companies in the 1990s uh, were demutualizing, um, and demutualizing, they did that for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason is for growth, right? They, the only way really to grow capital, okay, without utilizing your own efforts is to sell stock, okay? So a lot of uh, insurance companies went that route. And they also wanted to pay their CEOs enormous salaries, right? Uh, but New York Life, we said, no, we're not gonna do that. We held strong to mutuality, and we continue to put our policy owners first. Uh, the second thing is financial strength. Uh, financial strength is the core of our business. We um, make very conservative decisions. We're not going to be the Alibabas and the Ubers and everyone else. Um, we, we have a very conservative business model that allows us to make prudent business decisions and that will hopefully keep us in the business 172 years from now under the New York Life name, um, which we've always been, always will be. I've never been under any other name. I've never purchased any other company or sold any of our uh, pieces of our industry to other companies. Uh, the, the third thing is our career agency. You know, we stay strong to the career agency, the career agency distribution model. Uh, and the fourth piece of that is our commitment to life insurance. Uh, we have investment groups. We have uh, New York Life Annuity Company, which we show ranks number one um, and two of the best-selling products. But we are always New York Life and always will be New York Life because we believe life insurance is the core um, to financial planning um, and our whole life product is really what has driven the success of a lot of our clients because of the dividends, um, which relates to the mutuality that we continue to pay. Mm -hmm. And it actually, I uh, would be remiss in not mentioning that for those of you that know 40 plus well, one of our uh, important um, pieces of heritage is that J.C. Penney was one of the four founders of uh, 40 Plus, and uh, J.C. Penney got started with life insurance uh, held by New York Life or uh, with policy. the cash value that was in the policy. Yes. Started J.C. Penney. Yeah. So just a you know real interesting <laughs> tidbit. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, well, I think we start with a 4C. Uh, the first one is definitely our crusade, our mission. You know, why we do what we do. Many companies, they, they are around, you know, 100 plus years, right? But how do they really touch people and change in this, this big mission? Why we're here and how are we going to help um, all work supply every Americans to get back on their feet and to pursue the American? How we go about doing that? I think the big mission has to be there. And the second part, I think, uh, it, it has to be the company that we affiliated, you know, just like, a New York Life, you know, Air Guns and Transamerica been over 100 plus years. And more importantly, not only our own strength, we have the power of choice. I think that choice set us apart. You know, when, whether you want to work with that, you have the option to choose. You truly are in control with that. So I think we, we'd love to have that uh, opportunity to give the power of choice back to our client and our family. And then third, I think probably will be our compensation structure. And that also entices the entire system and the platform we have, right? In order to grow, in order for business to scale, in order for you to be successful in your career, you have to know that it's unlimited growth. If there's a limit, if there's a cap, then I don't know, it's, it's your own option, right? But for me, I like to be as, as big potential as is driven by my vision, driven by my, uh, uh, my, my dreams and how hard I want to work. And it shouldn't be a cap to anyone wanted to put forth. So I think compensation, in my opinion, um, we have a second to none. And we welcome any company and our provider and our partner to kind of you know share the good practice, best practices with us as well. And then I think the last but not least is, is probably our leadership as well. You know, how the teams come to support and to make sure that, hey, even though we might not have a direct connection, and everyone's into the model and system, and it allows us to collaboratively work together. Kind of like using the underutilized resources, but then everyone mutually um, have the profit sharing together. So I, I love about that model. Yes, thank you. Hey, thank you, Shirley. Wow, okay. For Knights of Columbus, I think the one thing that really differentiates us 
is that like, like New York Life, we are a mutual company. But our profits go not only to our members, but any, we, we give a lot of money to charity, and that's what we're known for. So when you buy one of our products, a good portion of the profits are going to charitable activities. So uh, th that's what we're known for, actually. So you won't get rich at, at Knights of Columbus as an agent, like you might at these two, with these two groups, but you will, you will definitely feel good about what you do. I feel good about what you do. It's not a foundation, too. Yeah. No, no, no. 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 And the fact of the matter is, you will feel good because you're helping people, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, and that's the big yeah. But but we're but we get the a, a additional bonus of you know that you're not only helping your clients, but you're helping those who are the poor, the uh, the mentally challenged, and other groups that we support. So that's that's the extra thing. Now, by the way. I know both of these guys from, I've known Yearly, Shirley for years. They wouldn't be here if they weren't good people. Yes. So, yes. You know, one day one of the dreams is my family said we're going to have our foundation. So we're going to build on that. So I think it doesn't matter what company, I think once you achieve the financial um, goals, you want to take care of your own families, right? And yeah. we all contribute, we all give. And it doesn't have to be Bill Gates level. We all can have a way to give back. So I think it's ultimately, it's control our own finance to get educated and then take care of our family and go out there to take care of the rest. Now, um, we have more questions, but do you all have questions? Does anything come to mind? I'm just a question for Al Johnson. The Nihilic University, how much of that program is in person? How much of it is online across? Very good question. So if we go back to the four pillars of our training, uh, each piece of the Nilek University is done in the group, uh, group drill, the GID, group instruction and drill. So all of it is actually done in the classroom. Um, that being said, some people want to learn faster and progress in certain areas. So we do have Nilek University online that allows you to kind of skip ahead uh, but before we go from the basic career course to the immediate career course uh, you, we, to the associates program, there are uh, bogeys or certifications that you must achieve in the classroom as well. Great Thanks. question. Yeah. Okay. And something that I've been amazed at is um, we had to get a license before for life insurance and um, and health insurance. But even though we already had that certification within the organization before you actually go out and sell there are courses for each different product so that you internally are going to feel secure and uh, you know uh, confident that you have not only the knowledge of the marketplace but you have the specific knowledge of the products that you're selling and I think that's very important there are courses for each and every product and they are there actually to help you as well with any questions. Anything else? Um, I, I'm really split because I want to ask the question of all three of you because A, I'm familiar with both your companies. I, I went 30 years ago, was talking to somebody at New York Life and just decided I didn't have deep enough pockets. You seem like a very forward-thinking, very dynamic company, ready for the new age. And and I'm a, I'm a Catholic. Uh, my father was a member of the Knights of Columbus. Uh, I work in a very altruistic job now at half my normal salary. So, right. you know, money has never been a motivator. But I'm 58 years old now, and I'm I'm going to be one of those that retires 75, 80, as opposed to 60 versus 65. Uh, so I'm really looking for ways, but I'm not quite ready to give up my job. So I want to know. From a part-time perspective, if you were mentoring me or I was in your, you know, part of your team, how would you handle a guy like me who's handicapped, doesn't drive, is relies on public transportation, has a job down here in DC, lives in Silver Spring. So it's gotta be like late nights and weekends and you know, those kind of things, but but it's very doable. I'm in a neighborhood that really could 
could benefit from any one of the three of your companies. So um, I, I'm really giving this some serious consideration. I just want to know how you would treat bringing somebody on board and how soon with all this training and orientation or whatever could I expect that I'd be prepared to actually start making my first couple of sales to start generating my own income? So I think I, I know what Shirley's answer may be. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll go first. And I feel like this is pretty cool. I feel like I'm in a town hall or something. All right. Uh, but to answer your question, so uh, each and every company has a different model as we spoke about before, and what I would implore all of you to do if you're interested in the financial services career, sit down with everybody, right? Because we gave you a thousand foot overview that's really not gonna give you the meat and potatoes of the company or maybe what you want to know what's important to you. Uh, so from a New York Life standpoint, um, in regards to part-time, uh, kind of when I went over here and I said you would be here, once we get to that next step, that's what we call our uh, pre-contract phase, okay? Um, really, we have a name for it. It's called a PTAS contract, Part-Time Training Allowance Subsidy. That contract allows someone to figure out if this business is for them, kind of like what Shirley was saying. Is this business for me? Is this something that I'm going to be able to do? Is this something that I'm going to enjoy, right? Um, during that phase, you're actually able to sell because you're contracting with New York Life, and you're making money um, on what we call the ledger system. Now, does New York Life uh, employ or uh, bring into our career agency part-time associates? We don't. Uh, we have a six-month period that you can stay in that phase, and at that point, you would have to go full-time status. Uh, and the reason, because, the reason we do that is because for the first three years within our compensation structure, we have something that's called a training allowance subsidy. So we help subsidize the income of someone being brand new into the business because we know it's, it's the, at the beginning it could be tough. Um, and we could be coming out of an industry where we, we need to make a certain amount of money and we want to help you support that income and build that up. Um, so once we get to that full-time status, we, we don't have any part-time uh, agents. Everyone is a full-time career agent. Um, we're giving them everything that we got and we're you know, getting everything that they have. Um, that's the honest way to answer Which, which depending on how well things work, is still a distinct possibility for me, so. Yeah, 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 it's perfect. Thank you. As far as for our model, of course, uh, you can see there's definitely a, a differentiation here. Uh, we don't really go into subsidize, so that's why we have, uh, you know, predominantly, and the first batch of the professional come in, they are all part-time basis, and we are driven by the part-time professional. And why we see that is because you know, financial industries is really unlike many other industries, right? And it's not easy. You can you can promote, you can create, you can uh, market, you can sell a lot of different products and solutions. But when it comes to people's money, it's, it's, it's a big responsibility, right? So even though you go in there with a couple of months, we give you the training, and it's still going to take everyone to have a different stage to overcome those learning curves. So we believe that, you know, you don't have to quit to everything, what you do, what you love about. You can come in. And of course, you have to meet the requirements to sustain your licenses, which is, you know, that, that is, everyone can meet those minimum requirements. How long you're going to stay in the part-time before you convert into full-time is really at your own pace. And we have a lot of the leaders all the way from corporate level to local field sales leader, and they will be there to guide you along the way. As long as you need them, they will always be there with the mentorship. So it's kind of really, where are the resources? Everybody's resources, right? We talk about technology. So we are leading in this space. So whether you want to be on the beach, you want to be at home, whether you want to be in the office with us, and we have a classroom, we have online. And we also work with 100 plus something provider. So you can imagine how many co continued education you can be, let alone just the industry itself. We have many mandated you know, continued education that we have to fulfill. So that alone, the training process is not a problem. It's depending on how well you want it um, to succeed and how much time you want it to commit into that, and you do have a free, uh, kind of like, on your own schedule, if you will. You don't have to be in the office, and I think this is more suitable for those very self-driven, can be disciplined, and highly desire to be successful individual. Because we're not here like a boss to managing you. Uh, we are here to coach you, to help you to become a business entrepreneur. And of course, there's a curse. You can start with the you know, financial professional, insurance representative, and then go through a different career path. Thank you. 
I'm not aware of any part-time opportunities with the Knights of Columbus. That said, if you're, if you're a brother, what I would recommend is going to one of the general agents and saying, here's my situation. I think if you're a brother, you know that we accommodate our own. So I would say I'm not aware of anything, but I would encourage you to talk to someone like Harry Cantor who might create something. Thank you. Any other questions? Aren't you guys interested in knowing what, <laughs> what it takes to succeed in this business? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> ask, ask the big elephant question. What is my work life going to be like? <laughs> <laughs> okay, John. What is your work life <laughs> like? <laughs> To be honest, it's a lot of work up front. Mm -hmm. You know, these jobs are generally commissioned based. It takes a while to build up your network and your clientele. And so, there's gonna be a lot of hours at first. But once you build your book of business, and once you get established, it's a very nice life. So, it's a trade-off short term versus long term, but you will be working, I, and I imagine, even if you're working part time, it's which, you know, uh, 80 hours do you want to work in the week, <laughs> in your choice. No, it's, it's long hours to start. I, I will echo to what John said. I think, you know, if you deep down ask everyone why we, what we each want to have, right, I think it is to have the freedom to do what we like to do, right, to be whoever we love to spend our time with. Right, and no time boundary and no financial uh, limitation, right, with what you all agree. And I believe that this industry and this people can deliver. So this is why I think this is worth for you to fight for and how much you're willing to sacrifice. And I'm thinking that, hey, you know, I just crossed 40, so I'm very proud. So I'm kind of part of the 40 club now. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw my birthday for the Labor Day. It's like, you know, the first 40 years is past. You know, what, what they have accumulated in life. And if God's wills, you know, with our Lord's and the, um, that I'm going to live with the average life span, 80 plus for women, right? Mm -hmm. So I have 40 some years. So what am I going to do to make the difference to live my life and how I'm going to live the impact? And I want to be financially free. You know, I want to have a time free that I can do anything with my family to, to, to live the life that we ultimately are here to live, right? So money is not everything, but a lot of things we can do without it. So why don't we get over this thing and learn how to manage our own money and then to be financially independent? We don't need to have a like a celebrity lifestyle, but everyone deserves to live the life with independence and dignity. So why don't we you know learn about this? First help ourselves. If this is something you're passionate about, you can go out there to help people and then let's do it together. And just like John said, yes, it takes a lot of hours, but for our business, right? We are not by ourselves, so it's not just you building a book of business. You can work with anyone you want to. Thinking about you only have 24 hours. How about if I'm willing to train 100 people just like me, right? Building the agency. So everyone contribute what you can contribute. If you can do five hours, sure. 10 hours, sure. Two hours. Everyone collectively, we can contribute and make a difference. Then why can't we share together, right? If you're greedy, you say, hey, I want to have everything myself then you will be working by yourself. That's no problem. But you will be limited with your capability, with your time, with your resources, with your network. Right? Do you want to look for a new client when you turn 70 years old? Probably not, right? So why do we work collectively? And we don't really see ourselves as competitor. We see ourselves there. We are all partners. We are all providers. We are here to help you know, individuals to, to get to our financial goal. So I would really encourage all of you. I mean, this is very rewarding. Um, you know, I'm thinking the next five to ten years, if I really work hard, since I've already worked hard, you know, for so many companies to build their dream, why don't I build my dreams and then to help my family, help other people, and then I will be completely free in the next five to ten years. And you can do whatever you want for the rest of 30, 40 years. <laughs> Does it sound good? I mean, is, is it some big enough reason for you to do it? 
So what about for you, Al? No. <laughs> <laughs> really. uh, so, you know, I, I echo, you know, what both of them said, that the, the, the truth of the matter is, in this industry, it is hard work, right? Um, because you are helping others that somehow, sometimes, don't necessarily know that they need help or want help right now, right? So um, life insurance and financial services is all, always and will always be um, sold and not necessarily bought. I would probably say that none of us, when we walk into our office tomorrow, are going to have a line of people wrapped around the corner saying, help me, help me, help me. Right? Maybe Knights of Columbus, you have a book. But you, nobody's, I, I do. nobody's wrapped around the corner, right? Yeah. You pick up the phone, you got to call them. Right? You have to be very, I, I think persuasive isn't a strong enough word. You have to be inspirational when you, when you deal with people because you have to get them to realize that they need to take action. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. So that's a big challenge. And so if you're out there sitting at, I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to do this, look at your skill sets and are you persuasive, are you inspirational, can you get people to see the benefit in this? If not, it's going to be a, a real tough existence for you. And to, to, to in, in regards to the income, probably in all of our companies, maybe in uh, the Transamerica model, the New York Life model more, um, it's a business that you can be as successful as you want to be. Um, someone that's used to making $150,000 a year and who needs to make $150,000 a year to pay three uh, tuitions, to pay a mortgage, whatever the case may be, they're going to walk, probably run, at a little faster speed than someone who may want to do it part-time and only make $25,000 a year. So it's a business that you can come in and work as hard as you can and want to to be as successful. Um, as you want to be. Unlimited income opportunity is there. Um, we have people within our firm that make $50,000. We have people within the same building, literally, that make $4 million a year. So, you know, it's, it, the opportunity is there. Doesn't your office have one guy that makes $10 million? No, he's $4 million. Oh, he's, he's, he's a, a Jim Mack. Yeah, he's $4 million. Yeah. We have one here, the $12 million. $12 million. Oh. Okay, we got. Fifteen million. <laughs> 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 the matter is, right? Can yeah. you see yourself making the money? Absolutely. To be honest, to, you what you me, need to make? Yeah, as yeah. a hotel, you know, the the, 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 the highest part probably I can be, you know, if I want to be in my career, maybe as a vice president, right, managing mm -hmm. multiple hotel, maybe quarter million. I think maybe this is the most that I will even dare to dream, you know, earning quarter million a year as a hotel VP. I think that's not too bad. But you know, right now, as we know that in the industry. We can. There's, there's no limit. So now I have a path that I want to work towards a million. Why not? Why not to make a million? Do I need a million? Not necessary. But can I use the million to help the rest of the world? Of course. That's why we're here to build. I'm, I'm here to build my foundation. So this is why I think you know people even need to bring back the hope, and then to, to even think about where are their dreams. Doesn't matter whether this is financially the, the passion you wanted to do, have the free time to spend to take care of your kids, to send them to the best school, whatever you want to do, and uh, it's, it's endless possibility. I think our message is is, is a hope there, and is the opportunities is a very exciting industry, and we hope that you will consider and uh, set out the time and talk to each one of us, and then we can tell you more about the story. It's really hard because there's so many information which I'm able to share within 10 minutes, which I went over 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is exciting. I'm the women here. I'm the women. I have to talk. What's good to see, though, is the passion, right? I think one thing that we all share is that we really are passionate about what we're doing. And I know these, like I said, I know both of these uh, individuals for a while, and we're passionate about what we're doing. That that makes the big difference. And I will tell you that from what I've seen, I'm new to the industry, but from what I've seen is there is a lot of flexibility. Now, within that flexibility, you have to decide how much of yourself you're going to put into it. But if you go in realizing that the first two, three years, you're going to put everything that you have into it, I've seen the people walking the halls who have seen the results, who are now well on their way to making quite a bit of money. And at the stage that we're, we're in 40 plus, right? Mm -hmm. 
at this stage, does it really matter what we're called? Does it matter anywhere uh, similar, or um, does it matter enough to really care? Are we an agent? Are we a vice president? Are we? What we need is retirement income. We need to make sure that when we do retire, we're going to be at least as well off as we are right now. Correct? So, you know, when I do get my business cards, I don't have them yet, but when I get my business cards, it's going to say agent. Do I care? No, because I'm going for these top two or three years so that after that, I can see the, uh, the fruit of my effort. I'll be able to see that there has been progress. And I want to thank my uh, colleagues at 40 Plus because it means a lot to me that they believe I can do it. And I think that that's, <laughs> that's one of the things that we all here at 40 Plus, I think that the majority of you all either always come to our Monday morning meetings or you're in our course. And so I think that that's one of the beautiful things about 40 plus as well, that we're here to support each other. And you find that within the industry, within uh, New York life, uh, people are not islands, they're helping each other. And I think that's, that's really actually quite beautiful. Yeah. We're, we've got a team spirit, we've got 20 in the team that I'm in. And um, one of the other things actually I love, I should mention, um, about half of our team is of Hispanic origin and about a third of uh, the team is African American and we do have someone from India and only one person is Main Street white American so what does this tell you and you know even here you're seeing in our faces I'm Hispanic uh, surely of course Asian uh, Chinese, uh, American. Yeah. See, what does this tell you? We're, we're, we have to communicate with our the people that we uh, live and work with, right? We have to be able to understand the culture, what makes them tick, how we can help them to as well improve their own lot in life as well be able to retire in a way that at least they're going to be as well off when they retire as they are today. So just my little. <laughs> I've had one more quick question, and, and the good news is you don't have to answer the second half of it. Mm -hmm. And that is, where do you stand with humanitarian, uh, I'm sorry, with green energy and humanitarian efforts? We already know where the Knights of Columbus are, are with humanitarian efforts. But yeah, and, and do you distinguish the sourcing of your products from? Actually, well, um, green energy was Green energy? Mm -hmm. yes. So in, in regards to green energy as a product, you know, we're not selling tangible goods. No, no, I, I, but, but not, not necessarily green energy, just green, you know, the green movement. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, the people um, who, are, who are sustainable, environmentally friendly yeah. manufacturers and, you know, whatever, they're all selling stocks, so you have a choice in your, in your portfolio. Ah, of, gotcha, oh, okay. gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, so to answer that question, I can't. Um, no, I, I really can't. Uh, the one thing that I can speak of from a humanitarian standpoint is the New York Life Foundation. Uh, the New York Life Foundation uh, to date has donated about 268 million um, to different humanitarian efforts uh, around the nation, around the world. Uh, most recently we gave uh, or donated $500,000 to the victims of um, Hurricane Harvey in Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the foundation is huge. Uh, we do a lot of work on a local level as well as a national level. But in regards to you know the holdings of our portfolio, how they may reflect uh, the green energy movement or um, things of that nature, I really can't. To try to find out for you, because that's a great question. If some investors have a moral Absolutely. obligation Absolutely. to make sure that they're doing yeah. it from humanitarian. Yeah. Yeah. We may. I just can't answer that one. With, with the portfolios, it's the same thing because you know we work with so many companies, right? So it's, it's hard to, and then the investor have the option to know that and need to be educated about if this is something passionate about. When we go through our process, get to know our clients, our investor, we will be able to identify if this is something that, that is important to them. As far as our own efforts, you know, just with the Hurricanes Harvey, 
and our company is not only just an individual representative business owner, we have raised about 150,000. And great things about our broker dealer, that match. So you can have your own foundation, you know, like our Chinese uh, American, we actually have a lot of foundation in overseas. So whatever the money in our own business raise, the company will match it. So I think this is awesome when you think about sky's the limit, we have like close to 100 plus um, all of those uh, volunteer uh, a charity, charitable uh, organization. So I, I think it's just depending on what you really want to, you can struggle with this and then we work with a lot of the um, uh, you know, public uh, charity uh, foundation and donor advisor fund and we help the clients to do that, philanthropy, or we're very big on that. I think this is about giving back. And I think most importantly is for individuals to get to educate themselves first and then to know they can take care of their household, right? So we have more opportunity to give back. So I think that's, that skies is a limit, yes. You, well, can, you can answer the first half. Uh, the the on, on, uh, green energy. On green energy. Well, you can talk about you. You said who, you can answer. Me? No, John. No, John. Oh. I'm sorry, John, I forgot your name. I, I was oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we already know where the Knights of Columbus are humanitarian. How about green? Uh, sustainable energy, that kind of thing. Yeah, you, you know, we we only deal with insurance, so we're not, we don't have the uh, investment component. So, okay, it, it's not applicable. To us. I think right. also because uh, we're a service in the industry, and you would ask that kind of question, it, it would be at least more top of mind with a manufacturer. Um, well, I think any mutual fund is going to be composite of certain things, and there and there's some mutual funds that are specifically set up for sustainable energy. They they only they only um, um, source the the dividends or whatever makes up you know I'm uh, educated whatever makes up the mutual yeah, fund. I would be surprised from companies that you know either are certified or identify as a company that you know. It only works within the confounds of sustainable energy or, or humanitarian efforts or you know whatever. I'm sure you both have funds that oh, would, yeah. would fall yeah. into it's, that yeah. category. It's, it's very open infrastructure, so it's really depending yeah. any investor. We have many social entrepreneurs. You know, they are startup company, and this is what they're passionate about. They have green energy. We will help them to find those uh, invest investment. Uh, that's not a problem at all. I think as far as our own, we don't really kind of focusing just look at our own is really depending on what investor are looking for, we help them to source those funds. So that that again skies is the limit. We work with so many companies, so many funds, literally you think of any amount the thousands of the funds we, we can access to it. So if there is an investor really passionate about it, we can certainly get those investments. Yeah, so I so I speculate you two already have certain funds that are set up that way. You just don't know them off the top of your head. We, yeah. we do have yeah, yeah. too many because every mutual fund portfolio they could be holding a hundred and thousand of, of different right. funds, right. managing every single of the holding and you know that, that's many many of them. Um, so it's not necessary just from Transamerica. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, I think it's uh, we've gone a little bit over, but I hope that it has been beneficial to you to get to know another industry, give it some thought, and uh, please let us know. You have, do you have everyone's uh, yeah. contact I have my information? my card here, so if you guys want it, so you don't have to be obligated to take it. If you want to just come on right up, and uh, that's a little bit more information about brokerage too. And we have uh, New York Life the information up front. Mm -hmm. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.